We all love riding our bikes, but if you've been cycling for a while, you may find yourself getting a bit bored when out on your bike or lacking the motivation to even get out of your house. Over the last few years, I've collected a number of tips that should help you fall in love with cycling again and make you eagerly anticipate your next ride, no matter what type of cyclist you are. Here are my 10 tips that I use myself and they broadly fall into two categories. Where you can go cycling and what you can do while cycling. So let's start with that first. Don't you wish you could safely listen to stuff when out on your bike? Well, with bone conduction headphones, you can. These are my Aftershock Strex Titanium headphones. I've been using them for a couple of years now. Quite honestly, I can't ride without them. Now, these bits at the end, they vibrate. And when you place them over your cheekbones, like so, sound travels via bone conduction directly to your inner ear. Now, you notice that my ear canals are wide open. So even if you're listening to music, you can still hear very clearly everything that's going on around you. You don't lose spatial awareness. So you won't be caught off guard if, well, I should say when a bus, truck, motorcycle, or even rickshaw shows up dangerously close to you. Now, some of you use regular earphones and you place the earbud in just one ear, but that still makes you less sensitive to sounds coming from one side. And come on, in Indian traffic, that's still dangerous. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, using a loudspeaker is fine, but uh, on a group ride, for the love of God, don't make me listen to Mehbooba Mehbooba for the entire trip. What's equally important though is what you listen to. I find listening to audiobooks or podcasts is much more entertaining than listening to music, especially on long rides. It's like reading a book while riding a bike. What more could you ask for? Now in heavy traffic, you probably won't be able to hear an audiobook with these headphones and I wouldn't be able to focus on a story anyway, so I switched to music. If you aren't recording your rides with Strava yet, you really should start. Arguably one of Strava's best features is its segments. These are predefined smaller sections of your route in a fixed direction. Strava will report segment times distinctly so you can easily see how you're improving or not as you ride those routes, especially climbs, repeatedly. When you next ride that route, you can challenge yourself by trying to beat your own best time or if you're feeling competitive, beat the overall best time for that segment, taking the king or queen of the mountain spot. The Eddington number is an interesting measure of how far you typically cycle. I've cycled at least 47 kilometers on at least 47 days, so my number is 47. My goal for this year is to increase it to 50 and this chart shows that I've ridden 50 kilometers or more on only 42 days. And this is where the stat gets interesting. If I do 8 more rides of at least 50 kilometers this year, I'll hit my target. The same concept can be applied to time on the bike or elevation gain while riding, so there are Eddington numbers for those stats too. If you just ride leisurely, you can make things more interesting by getting some training in. For instance, interval sessions where you ride at max effort for say half a minute, then ease off for the next minute or so before repeating is a great way of becoming a faster, stronger rider. Track stands, bunny hops, endos and manuals are skills you can pick up if you're more adventurous. But first, make sure you know how to properly ride a bike. Riding with upgrades is always fun, whether the upgrades are on your bike, like new tires, a new cycle computer or pedals, or upgrades to yourself where you buy yourself a new kit or shades. Upgrades make me want to drop everything and go riding almost immediately, but it's easy to fall into the trap of not being excited about riding unless you have something new to try out. My recommendation is to set yourself cycling related goals and only get upgrades if you reach those goals. Let's move on to the next category of tips, where you can ride. Riding the same routes to the same destinations can get really old fast. One of the best ways in which you can improve your cycling experience would be to try a new route or destination. There are dozens of ways in which you can find new routes, but it could be as easy as joining your city's Strava club to see where everyone else is riding or finding scenic locations on Google Maps and, well, just navigating to those points. Hills and ghats are almost always worth it if you can manage to climb. Don't be overly stuck up with starting and ending your rides at home. Rather than distance, focus on quality miles. If you want to get somewhere that's outside your normal reach for the time you have, 
consider using a car to drive part of the distance. Or when you're done with the main bits of your ride, chuck your bike into a rick or a tempo to get home. Using a support vehicle in this way would open your rides up to dozens of new destinations. If you're always riding regular roads, try riding some trails and gravel routes instead. These can be easy routes that run across hills, through urban forests or unsealed roads that you will find scattered around the countryside. Gravel riding is a completely different experience, there's typically zero traffic and you're much closer to nature. It'll truly take you to places you can only get to on a bicycle. Off-roading doesn't have to mean intense downhill riding, but if you're feeling adventurous, that's something you could try too. The reverse is also true. If you're only an off-roader with typically limited trails that are available in our cities, you'll find yourself riding the same trails over and over again. If you start hitting the road, even with your mountain bike, you'll enjoy riding new routes and getting to new destinations. Since you'll be able to cover much more distance on road, you'll be able to reach and experience parts of your city or areas surrounding your city you would normally never get to. This is Velo Viewer's activity map showing all my rides around Pune. Yes, I have been riding around a fair bit. Now if we turn on Explorer tiles and zoom out a bit, it divides the map into square tiles, colored red if I've ridden through them. Now the idea is to build as large a square as possible from adjacent red tiles. That's your Explorer Max Square. Mine is 7 because even though I have 9 columns covered across the map, I have only 7 rows covered top to bottom. To take it to 8, you can see that there's just one tile here that I haven't covered. I can zoom in, plan my next ride there. What this has forced me to do is ride some new roads in an area I've never been in. If I want to take my max to 9, I can see that there are 2 tiles I haven't ridden through. Things get interesting if I want to take it to 10. This is a hill and as you can see there are no roads marked in it. To get this checked off, I'll probably have to go off-road. If we switch to the satellite map, we do see some trails here that I could ride. Over on this side, this square does have roads but you know what? These are private roads of the National Defense Academy. If you're not in the armed forces, you won't be allowed to ride here. So to get this tile, I need to either join the army or maybe find a way onto this hill. As you can see, increasing your Explorer Max Square can lead to quite a bit of adventure. If you feel you're ready for the next level, you could challenge yourself by riding Brevets, which are endurance rides of distances ranging from 200 to 1200 kilometers or even higher. Brevets aren't races, they do have cutoff times for the entire route and for checkpoints along the route. On the other hand, you could take part in casual cycling events, actual races or time trials. Whatever you choose, training for these events can get quite intense, the rides are always challenging and they are a great opportunity to ride new routes and meet fellow cyclists in your city. If you typically ride alone, find a group to ride with. With a group, you should enjoy the ride a lot more as you get to shoot the breeze with other like-minded people during the ride and of course at the chai stops. There are disadvantages to group rides like not being in complete control over the route, destination and where to stop. But on the other hand, group rides are typically safer, you'll find new routes and experts to guide you along new trails if off-roading. Most groups will definitely help you become a better rider overall. I hope this collection of tips has given you some new ideas on how to keep your rides fresh. I'd love to hear what you think and better still, if you have suggestions, please leave a comment below. To ensure your bike is ready for your next adventure, check out my video on essential bike upgrades and my playlist of cycling routes in India for some destination inspiration. Thanks for riding along and until next time, keep exploring.